Right now, I'm sitting with Blue Jackets President of Hockey Operations and General Manager Don Waddell. And Don, it's been a busy week for you. You made the Patrick Line A trade. This is something that has been talked about for the last couple of months. Patrick wanted a change of scenery. You wanted to hopefully find a team that you could unload the entire contract, not have to take something else on. Uh, you found that with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Jordan Harris comes back the other way, young defenseman. Uh, you also had to give up the second round pick with Patrick Line A. With the entire deal done, what are your feelings? How happy are you that you were, number one, able to do it? And how comfortable are you with what you got and what you had to give up? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you go into this situation, you, you talk to everybody you possibly can, and you find out what the uh, market is going to bear. You know, most teams are in cap, uh, cap situations where, you know, they're asking us to hold half the money, and, and some had to move contracts back to us. And so I didn't think that was a good step in the right direction, you know. Uh, and we said all along, you know, if we can move Patrick, we will, uh, but we're not going to make a bad deal. You know, Montreal's in a unique situation. They had the cap space, and, you know, they know the player. And, you know, if the player regains uh, what everybody knows he can do, score goals, you know, they'll have a good player in their, uh, on their team. So it was a win-win, I think, for both of us. You know, again, for us to clear up, you know, the $8.7 million cap space and uh, $9 million a year in cash, you know, it gives us a lot of options. And, you know, my phone started ringing the day I made the trade, you know, because there's a lot of teams that are in cap problems that are looking to potentially move players. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to take those calls, make those calls. And, you know, if something happens before training camp, then good. If not, you know, we'll just wait as the season goes on. And, you know, there might be a need that comes up for us and we'll have more flexibility uh, within the cap system to uh, try to make our team better. You just said if Patrick Laine regains his form, it's going to be great for Montreal. And there's no question about that. This is a guy that once upon a time scored 40 goals in a season in the NHL. Does that make it harder for you as a GM? I mean, so many guys are looking for those kind of players. You had one, but you're in a situation where you just can't keep them. Yeah, you know, I have to take all the information that was given to me because obviously I wasn't here last year. And, you know, I talked to a lot of a lot of people, both uh, – um, internally and externally and you know the feeling was how things ended here last season when uh, he uh, I think it was 20 some games he played and then went in the program everybody felt that you know the move him on uh, was the best thing for this organization and you know it's hard to trade good players you know but knowing what we're dealt with and knowing that he didn't want to be here and you know, the back up in the summer when I got the job, that was the first question I asked players uh, when I called them all was, do you want to be part of the solution or not? And certainly when you have one of your higher paid players that comes out publicly and doesn't want to be here, you know, then I think it makes it uh, a tough situation to bring that kind of player back in your locker room. And that was close. <laughs> Let's be honest about it. Camp is not that far off. And I, I really love how you addressed that. And you did it way back before the draft where you said, just what you said right now. If I can't get a good deal, then it's possible he's going to have to come back here and start as a Blue Jacket. Were you starting to think at all that you might be in that boat, that uh, he might have to come back here and kind of play his way out? Yeah, no, I was. You know, I've talked to multiple teams that had interest in him. And again, it was um, there, there was deals to make, but they weren't deals that I could comfortably bring to uh, Mike or ownership to say, you know, this makes sense for us. So. You know, we kept pursuing it. You know, I spent a lot of time talking to a lot of, a lot of GMs in the league. And, uh, you know, Montreal uh, had a sincere interest. Uh, just started recently here. And, um, you know, we talked about, you know, what I was looking for. And, and you know, they were open that they, they had the cap space. And, you know, they had the owner's uh, consent to move forward with it. So we, then we just explored what that cost would be. And we also wanted to get a, a, some kind of player back in a deal and get a, a 23-year-old young defenseman that's played games, obviously played 56, I think, last year before he got hurt. You know, you, you, to me, you can never have too much on, on the back end. So um, that's why the deal made uh, total sense for our end. When you talk about the back end, in addition to Jordan Harris coming over now in this deal, let's go back to the draft a couple of weeks ago. You added a lot of defensemen. So uh, obviously that's a – well, I know you said in the draft that – you know, sometimes those were the best players available. But you've really stocked up on a lot of D here in the last couple of months, haven't you? Yeah, and I think, you know, you, you talk about good teams. Um, 
and you know they're built from the back end out you know up the middle so um, my experiences and some of my past employers uh, have been you know ha have the best defense you can have and that's the least amount of time you spend in your own zone the more chance you have to score goals and that's what it's all about scoring goals and giving up less so you know having guys that uh, are not only capable but puck moving defensemen that uh, uh, can make plays to get you out of the zone. I think it's critical for a, a very successful hockey team. Is this a player that they offered up to you, or is it somebody that you scoured the roster and and you kind of pointed out you would like to have, or was it somewhere in the middle? Yeah, somewhere in the middle. They gave us a list of names, and uh, you know certainly uh, we went through that pretty extensively and came up with Jordan. So uh, you know, again, I think the age of the, of the player and his experience already, and the other thing about it. Um, this is a, a wonderful person and a great kid, and I've heard that over and over now uh, since, since we made the move. Uh, actually, Trevor Timmons, who works for us, drafted him in Montreal, and he talked to me the night after we uh, made the trade. He said, you're going to love this kid. He's an unbelievable kid. And So, you know, again, it goes back, we need good players, but we, need, we want good people, and he certainly is going to fit that bill. Were you, um, were you comfortable, or do you... Do you wish you didn't have to include a second round pick in that, or is that just the cost of doing business and that's the way it goes? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, uh, I think it's a very reasonable cost. Uh, I can remember years ago I traded, uh, got a first round pick for taking just over $4 million. So, um, you know, from Montreal standpoint, you know, they like the player. So that's what uh, they're willing to take out of his whole cap hit the next two years. But for us to get out of, of, of you know, like I said, that kind of money for two years. Is certainly worth a second round pick. And there are ways to get that pick back down the road. And I know you love to trade and wheel and deal. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you have it back at some point. Well, you know, teams are always looking for at time, different times, regardless of where we are. Uh, hopefully in a playoff race there, you know, at the trade deadline. But teams are always looking for third parties. And we're going to have lots of cap space. And, you know, th there's no doubt we'll be able to restock our draft uh, picks that we've lost. Talking with Don Waddell, Blue Jackets president of hockey operations and general manager. You said that after you made the trade, your phone started ringing because now teams know that you have a lot of cap space, and you do. You've got a lot of it right now. Um, what are you looking for with that? As you said, you can be patient about it, and if something happens, something happens. But is there a certain something that you're still looking to add to this team that might work out this way because you have this extra cash? Well, I think you know my job as a general manager, anytime you can make your team better, uh, you have to look at that. And so, you know, we don't have a lot of forwards. We actually have 12 uh, with the big team. We got some guys, young players that are coming. Uh, but, you know, I, I held off because of not knowing what Patrick was going to bring back in a trade. But now that uh, we know we're not taking any forwards back, we can be more proactive with some of these teams. But, you know, so skill to me and scoring is still a priority. You have to score to win. So, you know, it's, if we can find a player, you know, it might be a salary situation for a cap team, somebody that has got potential or, uh, you know, just somebody that just fits that role that you really like to have. So we can be pretty open about it. No rush unless something jumps out that makes too much sense. But uh, I think we can be patient with this because I think as we get into training camp right now, the cap, you know, teams are allowed to carry 10% more than the cap. And once you get in training camp, put your rosters in, you have to be at the cap. So. You know, we're studying uh, every team's cap situation to see who potentially could be available and uh, pretty confident that uh, we'll be able to add to our group. Funny you talk about the forwards because the last couple of years the talk has been about how many forwards there are in this organization and how are you going to fit guys in. Now, you've, you've moved some guys out over the course of the summer and changed things around here. There's no question about it. But uh, now you find yourself in a situation where that's a position you want to add to. Yeah, and then, you know, again, we're not taking away anything from what we have here. You know, we want the young players to continue to develop. I think that's critical that they continue to get opportunities to play. But saying that, you know, we also know that it's a long season. You're not going to go through 100% healthy. And it's also sometimes you need to have that little uh, extra player that can everybody knows can jump in the lineup because, you know, you got, you got to – Make sure you learn how to win and, and give it uh, your 100% every night. And you know sometimes had no one's, if you get out of the lineup, you might not get back in. It's a little inspiration for uh, some players. Not all players need that, but certainly there's some players that need that. And you've talked about the importance of development. 
and you talked about your other stops and how you felt it was important to leave guys in the American Hockey League. And so when you're talking about this, a guy like Gavin Brindley comes to mind for me because he's a high second round pick, obviously. He got a chance to play one game in the NHL last year, but that doesn't mean that he has to jump into the National Hockey League and be one of your forwards this year because you've got that team in Cleveland there that uh, presents a great opportunity, right, for him to to get there and develop. If he makes right. a team, that's one thing. Yeah. But but if he doesn't, you want to be able to let those guys season a bit. Right. Good point there. You know, every player that comes in camp has a chance to make the team. I always say that. You know, you, you're, you're not going to make any decisions before you get to camp. But saying that, you know, these young players, I think, playing in the American League, the American League's a great league. And from a development standpoint, uh, I've seen it over and over where – uh, players go down there and they may be down there 20 games, 40 games of the whole year and develop their skills to become a regular NHL player. The worst thing for a young player is to be put in a spot where he ends up playing, you know, eight, 10 minutes a night, scratch some nights. He's not going to learn. He's not going to develop that way. So you, you just want to handle these. I think every situation is different, uh, but handle it uh, knowing that if, if using Brindley for an example, that he's a future player that's going to be for the Blue Jackets that – we put them in the right spot to to have success and teach them how to be a pro. Yeah, and sometimes that 20-plus minutes a game you can get in the American Hockey League. You're not going to get it in the NHL right away. No, no doubt about it. You know, again, you know, our our goal in the American League is develop and win together, and I think you can do that. I've always said you can do that, and we're not going to have 20 prospects down there. You know, we'll have the seven or eight that we have and surround them with some good veteran players, some other good players, because I, I truly believe... You know, if, if you can win and develop at the same time, you know, I've been in situations where we've gone to the finals where young players got to play 24, 25 playoff games. And I don't care what league you're playing, when you get in the playoffs, it's all tough hockey and, and great learning experience. Yeah, and I think if you go back just in a, in a short period of time and you look at the, the history of teams in the American Hockey League, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning goes to the Stanley Cup final three times. The core of that team in the American Hockey League was in back-to-back championship series. Uh, Look at the uh, Cleveland team that won the Calder Cup a couple of years ago. Uh, The guys like Josh Anderson, Zach Wierenski, Oliver Bjorkstrand. When they came here, they were used to winning. They weren't used to losing. And that's really important, isn't it? Yeah, I always say winning breeds winning, but so does losing. If you lose all the time, you you accept it. And that's just not acceptable. You know, uh, I've said you know, our goal every year should be to win the Stanley Cup, not not, not anything else doesn't mean we're going to win the Stanley Cup every year, but we've got to, to have that mindset that we believe we can contend and win it. And uh, what you said is uh, I so believe that, you know, winning does breed winning. Once you win, there's nothing like it. But it, flip that around, if you lose every year, you kind of get used to accepting it. So we don't want that in this organization. Because we're talking about guys and getting experience and seasoning and all that stuff. The one guy that jumps out to me is Denton Matejchuk because you actually got a chance to see him play in the playoffs in Cleveland, it was only a couple of games, but man, it is hard, especially as a defenseman, to walk into the American Hockey League just coming out of junior and look like you've been there for a long period of time. And uh, there were parts of his game that looked like, yeah, he was just used to it. Is that, I know there are a lot of guys you're excited to see at camp, but that guy in particular, are you looking forward to what you might see and how much he might challenge to be on this team? Yeah, 100%. You know, I was there the first game he played as a, you know, you jump in from junior hockey to an American League playoff game, and I can remember the first first uh, um, shift he had, he came up left side, he snapped a pass across ice, and I love defensemen that snapped the puck. He didn't, he didn't saucer it, he snapped it and created a two-on-one for us, first shift of his first pro <laughs> game. So... Um, what I've saw and I've watched a lot of video now of him in juniors that uh, you know he's going to be a player. Uh, obviously, going back to like we talked about Brindley, you got to make sure you put him in the right situation to have success. And if he has to start in the American League, I think that'll be a great development for him. If he comes in here and you know, we sit here at the end of camp and say, you know, we, we, there's no way we can send him back, that that's the decision we'll have to make as management. With Don Waddell, president of Hockey Operations and general manager for the Blue Jackets. Last week, you were able to fill out the coaching staff. Uh, Dean Evison now has all of his assistants uh, in place. How involved were you on that? Was that was that a lot of Dean? I mean, these are the guys he's going to have to work with, and obviously you're the boss, so you're, you're going to be a part of it. But how much were you of the process? Well, the good thing about Dean is uh, uh, Dean wants me to be a part of the process, and 
you know, obviously I talked to him about uh, the guys we had here and and, and Bowler and, and Mac, and I said, you know, uh, I'd like you to interview him. I'm not telling you have to hire him. And once he interviewed him and did his homework, he came back to me and said, there's no reason for me to make a change there. And then uh, he heard so many good things uh, about Hablet, and, and and you know, obviously he didn't know him, but knew the work he did in Chicago. Once he talked to him, he called me. I remember he says, I can see what everybody's talking about. This guy gets it, and he's a good person. And then the the one that he'd worked with, Scott Ford, I, I only knew Scott as a player. Uh, I knew him as a player, not as a coach. And so he asked me to talk to Scott. Um, so I talked to Scott multiple times, and then I reported back to Dean that I'm on, pay, I'm on board, and Dean was excited about that. So, you know, I, I think as a the coach and manager, if we don't work together on everything, um, you can't have all success. I mean, it, it's we're in this thing together. We, we both want the same result. Um, and how we get there is by communication and, and you know supporting each other and trying to uh, make the good decisions every time. When you're talking about Mike Havlin, he's been in Cleveland the last couple of years. Uh, when I talk to the people in Cleveland, the one thing that they say to me is, this guy is a relationship builder. He has that unique talent of being able to build trust and relationships with players. That is so important for an assistant coach, right? And you've coached before. You know how important it is. You've got to have that go-between guy between the head coach and the player sometimes to be the mediator, uh, you know, just to work things out. Is, is that the biggest strength that he has? Well, the, the, the experience, obviously, going back to playing and coaching, um, you can kind of give up uh, – anything about experience because I think experience is key but uh, first of all he's a great person too which makes it but as you said the relationship with uh, the assistant coaches and, and the players is is going to be critical because they hear a lot more than the head coach hears at times when they're around the room traveling you know why the hell is he doing this and that and you know they're there to explain and build those relationships and I know uh, uh, Mike's got great great relationships with all the guys down there um, and you know when I go back to again where you know you hire people that are capable of doing their job that are good people you're going to find success um, one thing I've got to ask you and maybe this is a Dean question and not you but I'm with you so I'm just going to ask you this you've got a lot of former defensemen <laughs> on that staff um, who's going to run the offense well, Dean and I've talked about this a lot, and uh, you know, Dean, Dean, in his past uh, head coaching experience and assistant coaching, has always run the forwards, uh, particularly down the middle. He was a center as a player, um, and then you know, if you look back at the different skill set, I, I don't want to give away all Dean's secrets, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the one thing Dean wanted, what he asked me for his staff was to get a uh, a defensive coach, uh, a power play coach, a, a penalty killing coach. Um, and you know he oversees everything. He'll he said he'll handle the forwards with some help. Uh, and you know if you go back and look, uh, Havlet uh, when he was in Chicago was in charge of their power play. Their power play is pretty good. Um, no, not taking away from Kane and <laughs> Taze and, and some of the players they had there. At yeah, the that time. wasn't bad. Yeah. That wasn't bad. Uh, but so uh, he hasn't laid it all out. He's talked to the guys about some of his ideas and that. And I think. Before we get to camp here, uh, he'll have everybody's duties all lined up. All right, before I let you go, Cole Sillinger. Finally, you know, you're talking about all the things you've had to check off your list this summer, and you get the Cole Sillinger thing done. And how happy are you that that's finally in the rearview mirror? And how happy are you that you've got this young man that is, you know, he's going to come back here after having a great bounce back here last year? Yeah, uh, first of all, there's never a doubt. Um, his agent, Craig Oster, is a deal maker, and, and I've done many deals with him. And uh, Josh has been working with him uh, on uh, you know, the term. The big thing was the term. We started off maybe going long term. We knew that both sides probably couldn't commit because there's still upside that we haven't uh, potentially seen in the player. So I had never had a doubt that we'd get the deal done. We finally, we, we both agreed that two years was going to be the term, and then you know, it's like every contract, you, you haggle at what the dollar amounts be. But even when we started, we were so close from uh, what they thought it should be and what we should be that there was never a, a fear that this wasn't get done. So we're, ha we're happy to have uh, 
Still be back for a couple of years and look forward to continuing his career uh, down the road. Are you happy that you're able to get not only Sillinger, but Kent Johnson, Kirill Marchenko? You get them all done. You get them on these relatively short-term deals, which are basically kind of the, hey, just prove it. Just come back and show me that what you've done is not a fluke. Or I guess in the case of Kent Johnson, last year was a little bit of a down year. Show me that two years ago was what you really are. Um, because sometimes it's hard to get those deals. Sometimes agents want the uh, want the big money in the long term, but you were able to stay away from that and get what you needed. Yeah, I think with Kent, I think the part was the l- let's take the contract out of us. Don't even worry about the contract. You know, sign him for three years. All he has to do is go out and play. Doesn't have to worry about year to year. You know, because we could have held a line there and said, you know, pick up your qualifying offer. The agent could have played a line that you know he only wants to sign one year. Uh, but we agreed early on that a three-year contract made the most sense. And, you know, it's just a matter of getting comfortable. And that deal got done relatively quick. But I think in his situation, after what he's been through, uh, I think this is the best. He doesn't have to worry about a contract. Just go out, continue to uh, get stronger as a player. And as that continues, uh, like, like you said, I hope I'm paying him a lot of money in three years because that means it's worked out pretty well. Interesting what you just said there. He doesn't have to worry about a contract. And I think what is easy to forget in this whole big scheme of things is players are people. And even though your contract is up, and even though you're a restricted free agent, which means you're going to get another deal, sometimes that unknowing of what is the deal going to be, how much do they like me, especially in Kent's case, coming off a year like last year, that can really weigh on a player, can it? 100%. I've seen it be such a a positive and such a negative, too, because – you know, as you said, we're, we're dealing with human beings here. You know, they're hockey players. Young human uh, beings in this case. Y- young, young human beings. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, it's it's a comfort level for some. Some uh, could deal with it better. It's, it's like life, you know. People deal with situations different than other people. And um, I think with young players, as you said, you know, going through this for the, really the first time because their entry-level contract is pretty standard, to be able to uh, not have to worry about for the next three years, and particularly in Kent. Every player, like I said, we approach them a little bit differently, but with Kent, I think this made so much sense because of what the potential is there. He knows he's got to work on his game. He knows he's got to get stronger. We're going to you know, continue to work with him. We've invested in him. You know, we want to have success. You know, he's, he's a higher draft pick He's got for a reason because he's got high end skill, but now we got to take that to the next level. As I sit here talking with you in late August, part of me is thinking, I kind of feel bad for you because this is the, the time of the year that all the GMs are supposed to be off and you know golfing and they're hanging out at the cottage on the lake and all that kind of stuff. And here you've been <laughs> in here every single day. But but I don't feel bad for you because I know that's what you love, isn't yeah, it? I, I, loved, I go to the office seven days a week. I, I, it, when I was in my previous place for 10 years, there was only two days I didn't go, and it was the 25th of December. So... Uh, I love going to the office. I, I love to work. And, and every day it's something, I always say in this business, uh, some new idea comes up every day or some issue comes up every day. And so uh, yeah, I'm very fortunate that uh, my wife knows my, my, my life. And uh, so she does her own thing at times. And I just come to the office and do my thing. Have you been able to get your life in order? I'm talking about outside of here. I mean, you know, you've had to come in, find a place to live, get your cars registered, all those things that uh, we all have to do every day. But all we talk about is doing the, the signing of these contracts. I mean, you got a life too. Well, I had, it was funny because the day we made the Patrick trade was my birthday. And so my wife said, well, what, where do you want to go to dinner? I said, well, we got to go buy a washer dryer. So we went and bought a washer dryer that day. That, uh, that was uh, got that accomplished. That was good. So, uh, like you said, you, you, that, that's the other part uh, you know um, that we talk about because you, you know you, you want to make sure you support at home and take care of things that you need to get done. And uh, so we're 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 getting there. We're uh, getting much closer. That's for sure. And uh, uh, we'll be there by the time the start of the season comes around. What was the bigger self present, the washer and dryer, or getting the line thing taken care of for you? Yeah, yeah, it was funny how it all happened on my birthday too. So I could, I'll never forget that. But no, obviously the Patrick thing was uh, critical for us to uh, make progress and finally get it across the finish line. You know, it's been ongoing for the months since I've been here, so it, it was it was nice to put that away. I used to work with a baseball coach one time that used to play 
like the reserve players on their birthday because he said that your biorhythms are up on your birthday. And first I thought he was nuts, and then I'd see a guy that played like once a month come in and go four for four in that game. So I guess your biorhythms were really up on your yeah. birthday. So happy belated birthday to you. Congratulations on everything you've been able to get done. I know you have so much more that you want to do. And thanks for taking the time, Don. I appreciate it. Oh, Bob, pleasure to be with you, and thank you very much.